I want to encourage you to join with millions of other Ohioans and vote no on Issue 1. Issue 1 is a proposed constitutional amendment concerning unrestricted access to abortion and much more. Under Article 1, Section 22, Letter A, quote, every individual has a right to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions, end quote. This clearly includes adults and minors. The reproductive rights of minors will find protection in this amendment, and this without parental consent or notification. Now, how do I know that? Well, the lawyers at findlaw.com asked the question, quote, do minors have reproductive rights, end quote. Their answer, quote, in the United States, the power to govern the sexual and reproductive health and rights of minors is mostly in the hands of the states, end quote. They go on to say that some states have no parental notification laws, while other states do have parental notification laws. However, not to worry, because even in those states where parental notification law exists, quote, many healthcare providers concerned with the reproductive rights and well-being of minors have opposed these laws and other laws restricting minors' reproductive freedoms. The point is, the same activists who write and advocate for the adoption of the amendment are the same advocates pushing for the application of this amendment onto minors and children. So what is the standing of Ohio parents? Well, the amendment goes on to say, under letter B, quote, the state shall not directly or indirectly burden, penalize, prohibit, interfere with, or discriminate against either, one, an individual's voluntary exercise of this right. This amendment trumps any Ohio law concerning parental rights on consent and notification. Perhaps you think our elected representatives will be able to chip away at the more radical parts of this amendment. But did you hear what I just read? Quote, the state shall not directly or indirectly burden, penalize, prohibit, interfere with, or discriminate against either, one, an individual's voluntary exercise of this right. Your elected official will be helpless to change or amend any part of this constitutional amendment in any way. This will be the law of the land, period. Now this is also about abortion free and complete access to abortion at any time during pregnancy. But, you may say, under letter B, number three, it says, quote, however, abortion may be prohibited after fetal viability. But, the following words go on to show those words to be empty window dressing, because it says, quote, but in no case may such an abortion be prohibited if the judgment of the pregnant patient's treating physician that's an abortionist, it is necessary to protect the pregnant patient's life or health, end quote. Now this is taken right out of the Roe v. Wade playbook, for a woman's health is defined as physical, mental, emotional, even economic health. And the one who makes the determination as to whether it's important to the woman's health is the abortionist. Now think about it. Since Roe v. Wade, there has been an estimated 70 million abortions in our country. In not one of those cases did the attending physician say, you know, young mother, I don't think this abortion would be good for your physical, mental, emotional, or economic health. I recommend you not get an abortion. No, in every single case of 70 million mothers, the choice was abortion with the affirmation of the attending physician, the abortionist. Now this amendment makes access to abortion available at any time during pregnancy, as long as an abortionist says, I think this would be good and a healthy choice for you. I encourage you to join with millions of other Ohioans and vote no on issue one.